Welcome back to the VW project. I'm just trying to finish up a few little things. Uh, this is like the most major thing. And you see like this, this stuff? It's like little foam, black pieces of foam. And it's like coming out from the, where the defroster is. And then if you look in the vents, can see a bunch of pieces in there stuck inside <clears throat> okay so when you got stuff like that blowing out of your vents that means your blend doors are called they're doors that control either the hot or the cold and then which direction the wind the air is blowing in your car so unfortunately they're behind all this stuff and so we got to, instead of taking all the whole dash out, <clears throat> we're going to try a little bit different way. That's hopefully a lot easier. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we got to do is take out this top part of the dash here. Got that piece out. Next, you got to get these screws out right here. There's one there, and there's one over here. For that, you need a T20 star set. Okay, you are going to need a few tools for this job, nothing too expensive. Okay, next, you gotta get these ones that are really close to the windshield. Once we get it started, you know, you can get them out pretty easy. Just make sure you keep them little pieces in. So now we just got the two more. Uh, right here and right here. I'll just do the same thing on those. Okay. Once you got those three other bolts out you can pull the plastic tops out just kind of gently pull them up Okay, and you're going to have the speaker wire here you want to unclip. There we go, just going to push it in. Clip that. So the other thing is if you want to, if you need to change the speaker, that's how you get to it. Okay, we'll set this aside. The other thing you got underneath this panel here, if you need to take it off, is the cabin air filter system. So if your air and your air conditioning smells kind of, you know, damp and dirty or whatever, you can 
get in here and uh, there's a few more screws you have to undo and then you can get down there and change the uh, cabinet air filter system keeps your air smelling fresh okay now we just got to do the other side same thing just pulling it off Same thing, unclip the speaker. You just kind of have to keep wiggling it around, pushing in on it, until finally it decides to let go. Okay, we got this out. Yeah. All right, now we want to take the flower vase out. section it's a gentle pull and it's just you know it's connected with a couple of clips so a gentle pull this way and then it'll come right out well finally an easy thing now we have to pull the radio out A little cover, just use a thin screwdriver. I'll just pull that pull that off. And now this is a stereo I put in, so it's got some clips on the sides. You have to have the little key tools for so let me look for those so I'll get back there's a couple of T20s here let's take these off and see if we can get back it's been a while since I put this in here so I don't remember exactly how I couldn't find the little keys to it I think that did anything. There we go. It's a bit easier. There we go. Let's take this out. Hacksaw blade trick. Your radio, you know, everybody's radio is different if they put a different radio in. So it might take a little. <clears throat> you're usually supposed to have these little metal sl sl uh, pieces of, you know, it's something similar to this <clears throat> that slides in here to release it. <clears throat> that unhooked itself when I pulled it out okay so that's all unhooked and ready for the back seat oh, we're keeping everything right now okay next we got to remove <clears throat> climate control switches down here for the defrost and the heated seats and stuff pry your little screwdriver in the side here
take your time because you don't want to break anything. This is the part you want to take off, this little piece right here. So we'll get to this in a minute. You don't want to pull all those wires too far out. Push that back in there. Okay, now we gotta do this side. There, that one came out right. Okay, so we got a screw here. And a screw here, a screw on the bottom here on both sides. There's one over here too. So we gotta take all those those four screws out and then we can pull out this little section here. It's the same thing, they're all T20. This has been opened before, I can tell. Somebody screwed it in a little too tight. Track the plastic a little bit underneath. There's a little tip where it's kind of hard to reach. You can get yourself a little socket set. You know, if you have a little socket set. And for mine, the, the it's a quarter inch socket fits perfectly for the T20 to fit into and uh, that way if you got your screw gun or whatever you don't have to use that all the time because it's kind of bulky and hard to get down in these little spots down here where we're going loose now we just gotta do the other side we got the four screws out now I just want to gently pull this out there we go and now we just want to undo all these clips here only got three spots, but <clears throat> let's mark them anyway. On one. Two, two, and three. Three. Now we just gotta pry these loose. Got this piece on the side here that fits in like this arrow slot here, so that's why it's kind of hard to get out. <clears throat> there we go on that one. Yeah, we got a little more room here to work. I mean, I guess they were really worried about the the seat heater switch coming loose you know as you're driving along at 200 miles an hour in this car you know this might vibrate loose I guess you don't want to force it though you know because then you're gonna break something 
And then you just got something else to fix. <clears throat> you don't need that. I mean, you got enough going on right now with just getting that world all. Get driving around town a little bit, you know? Okay. We got that, and then the last thing here is this little light. You just kind of push this through, twist it, and it comes, comes all off. And so we got this all off, finally. Okay. All right. Okay, now we gotta take out four more screws here. It's kind of hard to see. You can see this one easy. I mean, if you pull back, this is where all that stuff is we just removed. So, it's pretty much right above where the cigarette lighter thing is. You kind of go straight up and there's a screw here. And then underneath, there's another one. Right here. It's the same thing on this side. There's a screw right here. There's a screw right here. And there's another one if we pull back a little bit. You know where this shiny metal clip is? It's right behind that. And they're all the same, T20. So I'm going to unscrew all those. It's kind of hard to film this awkward angle. But uh, that's the ones I'm taking out right now. So we got all those screws out. There's one thing I was going to show you. Bottom screw on the driver's side. No, I know somebody's been in here before because <clears throat> what they ended up doing was tightening the screw too tight. And I just cracked it all to pieces. There's a couple pieces of it right here. So I'm probably going to uh, put a little bit of JB Weld epoxy and maybe like a little washer that could stick on the back of there so it'll stick. Here's the leftovers checking out what's going on. Hey leftovers. Trust me in here helping me. Okay. He's giving me a he's checking up on me. Okay, so now let me let me put the camera back on the tripod and we'll lift this part out here. Okay, make sure you put all these wires back, push them back a little bit. And all your video wires are out of the way. And then this should just simply pull off. Taking a little wiggle on the ring out. Okay, it looks like there's a Wires here. There we go. It's easier to unplug them inside. For sure. There you go. Okay. So we get this all out. Okay. 
Okay. There's four more T20 screws on top of this. Definitely been opened before. Somebody put a washer in there. In that one. Okay. If I remember right, these just kind of slide off. I did replace this bar in the glove box when we bought this car. I don't remember that being that hard to put on. I think they just slide on. pull off but they're and they're really good. Got the rubber pieces of rubber holding them in. Get it wedged out a little bit using the top and bottom of the same tin. If you get over to the side here, put your screwdriver in, and then you can pull it out. It's just like in there with some rubber. 
Okay. And I'm not sure if I have to take this bottom out. I hope not, but I have to take this off to get to what I want to do here. And it's got a couple of. It looks like a bigger one than a T20. Let's see. T30. T30. that off I take the glove box out so we're gonna take this piece off the side and just kind of pry it open okay just some screws here here See. There's two screws here that they're missing. And then there's three screws down here on the bottom. There's a little tiny pin, plastic pin here that fits over. And then you want to unhook the glove box light. right here okay now you got the glove box out that's not too hard you know it's just uh it's just a few screws there's another screw i think i was on the side here 
connects in here, but it was missing too. This car's got some screws missing. Okay, let's set this aside. Okay, now we just gotta work on the rest of these screws. I know there's four down here. Seems loose on that side. Over here we got another one. This might be the last one holding this in. There's the airbag, you don't want to mess with that. <clears throat> okay, that's holy cow. Look at this. It's a big old beetle. Huh. It's a beetle stuck in a beetle. A little petrified. Looks like a little mascot. Okay. Now we gotta do the other side. Okay, now we gotta take out this just a cover piece. This first, this just pulls off. Just some four screws on the top here.
few little screws on this instrument panel here. going to be the same kind of deal where we're going to have to take off this gray part here. That's where all the fuses are. We got a couple of screws here, and there's three in the bottom, looks like. Now, Pete might, might just fall down. Three more off. Let's see if this moves anywhere. Feels like it's loose. Just kind of got the push clips in, so try and pull it out kind of straight. Wiggle it a little bit, but don't get crazy because you don't want to break anything. Okay, now we got some clips here.
this big clip here. Use this for the lights. Okay. Now we take this out. Stuff's pretty dirty too. Okay, now to get this piece off. It seems like a lot of work, but it's actually, you know, we're not going to be taking any of this structure out or anything. It's just a covering. I think if you take your time, I mean, I'm not a mechanic. I just, I just learn how to do stuff as I need to do it. Just trying to learn a few things and you know, putting them on YouTube try to help somebody else out so they don't spend thousands of dollars on something that they could have done you know at home for you know it's going to take probably a better part of a day I'm probably not even going to get this done today because I kind of started a little late and it's uh, going to be getting darker in here pretty quick So, I mean, if you got a weekend and you just take your time and be patient and don't, you know, don't get crazy and carried away and start breaking stuff, just be a little patient and it's going to save you a lot of money. screw here there's another one on the opposite side like right under where the wiper blade control arm is you'll see them pretty easy now I think we got this now Never done it before, so I'm not sure. Huh, there's another screw right here. That's why I say don't get in a hurry and just start yanking on it because I would have broke that plastic off. Try to unclip the speedometer cable. The display, and it's got this crazy clip on the back. You press this little button right here, and then you flip up this purple piece at the same time.
There we go. And it pulls out. Same thing on this other side. really hard to do one-handed. Push down on this little little piece right here and then this flips up. And then it just pulls out. Hooray! We got that out. Yeah, we should be able to take all this out. It'll be easier to put those screws and stuff back in too, that way. Okay. Yeah, this whole part just comes out. These two wires here slide in this hole. And on the right. This out. Okay, this is where we're at. It may look a little extreme, but you know, it took a few hours and it's just undoing screws. It wasn't anything too too difficult. Um the idea is, see, down here, inside this area here, is the blend doors. And I don't know. Can you see anything? Like way down inside there. There they are, way down the bottom there. So, the idea now is to actually get access to that without taking all the rest of this stuff off. Because you don't want to have to take, you know, the airbag out and all this and the steering wheel off and all the rest of the stuff. So, the plan is cut like an access port where I can get my hand in there. Because it's actually, it's down here, it's about a foot away probably, through these vents. So if I can cut, this is all just plastic here. Cut through this plastic here, maybe like right here. And then cut a hole in here. All nice, you know, and pretty neat. And then up here, I can take this whole piece out. This piece is separate, I think, so I can get this whole piece out, and then I can I can have enough room to get my hand in there to actually fix those things. That is the plan. It ended up being a little bit more of the dash coming out than I thought, but to actually get it so you have enough room, I mean, you could could cut a little hole here and get your arm in there, but. I think it's better if you got a little more room. Trim this down here, here. Trim this away. And then we'll just, <clears throat> when we're all done, we'll just reseal this all back in. We can put some JB Weld on it or something to, to hold it. Put some new foam, new foam around here. That way we can vacuum everything out too and get it all cleaned up. Okay, so that's what we're gonna that's the plan we're gonna try next. Okay, one thing I did have to do was reattach the speedometer because uh, 
this is a convertible and the convertible top didn't work and I had to put the top back up uh, for to store it last night but today is another day we're gonna unhook back unhook that back up and then we're gonna get into cutting this piece out so we can get access down to the blend doors and we're gonna get this fixed all right Okay, there's nothing to do but to get it done, huh? Got my Chicago Electric oscillating multi tool. I'm gonna cut. Cut right through here. There's a little opening right here. I'm gonna cut just right through here. And then I'm gonna make another cut. right here both sides that's what the idea is to get this out of the way so we can get down into this area I think it's gonna work. Okay. Do this side.
here. <laughs> now look what we got. Hang on. <clears throat> look what we got here. There's the blend door. Let's see which one of these levers. Okay. <clears throat> this is the one that controls which direction. And this is the one. Heat. Hot or cold. See that? We can actually get way down in here. And you can see brilliant engineering there. They uh, these little doors of just I think it looks like galvanized steel. And for some reason they decided let's just uh, <clears throat> put a bunch of holes in them and cover them with foam. So like in 10 years or whatever, they'll wear out and you'll have to bring your car in and get it serviced. Isn't that crazy? Why wouldn't you just make a solid door? If anybody knows the answer to that, please let me know in the comments. Because what we're going to do, and what all the fixes are for this, is to just cover it up with tape. Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to clean up... I'm gonna clean up this area here. If there's any little more pieces of foam, you know, this is the stuff that comes out. See all this little particles? That's what was on covering up those holes. So now we're, we're just gonna get the vacuum, do some cleaning and stuff before we actually get back here. Let me zoom out. So you can see where we're at. <clears throat> this is where we're at. And it might look pretty extreme. But we didn't have to take out. You know this pillar. And all this other stuff. The airbag. And the steering wheel. And <clears throat> all the rest of this plastic here. We, You know we did probably. A third of the way. That you would do if you took all that stuff out. So, and we didn't go into anything crazy. I, I think this is pretty, pretty good fix. All right. Okay, let's get cleaning it up. There's one thing I just noticed. <clears throat> Taking this out. This is the piece I just cut out. Fits in here. I forgot to look up here and there's a screw of course and so <clears throat> I kind of broke that out I didn't hear a crunch but I probably broke that out so <clears throat> I'll put a little I'm gonna have to cover this with some JV weld and like a washer or something and then take this screw out. So be careful when, you, when you're when you taking that out to remember to take that screw off there. My bad. Okay, this is where we're at now. Guys, I cleaned all the, the vents out. Cleaned all the top of the dash. and You know, just used some Windex. And then I went down here. Cleaned all this out, 
where the blend doors are. You see on the bottom of that back one, there's a little like calcium buildup or something. Anyway, I just used a little nylon brush. Stick it down in there and get my hand all the way down in there and clean it off a little bit. Uh, let's see, right now, I'm getting ready to put the tape on. This one's got four pretty big holes, and the back one's got ten holes. Can't see quite all of them. Let's get the camera down in there. There you go. So I've got to cover all those up, and what I what I'm going to use is just this, you know, aluminum tape. It's for like ducting in your house and stuff. So it's insulated. And you can cut it and you know just we'll just piece on a piece at a time and see how it goes. Okay, that's what I'm gonna try now. So let me let me get going here on this. Got one piece on. <clears throat> it's cutting a little bit at a time. Get my hand down in there. lightly stick it on and then when you got it in place you can smush it down and the stuff's really sticky so I don't think you've got any <clears throat> I mean it's designed for putting on metal like this and different temperature changes so I really don't think you have to worry about it coming off you know as long as you get it I mean, don't put your fingerprints all over it and everything first and then try to put it on get you a new piece, but as long as you get a nice clean piece on there, smooth it down. You can feel it sticking you know, pretty good. So that's how I'm doing it, one, one little piece at a time. Okay, so I got this one, front one done. There we go. It's all covered up good. Let's get that out of the way. And so now we got to work on this back one. And it's going to be kind of more by feel because you can't really see when you got your hand all the way down in there. But I mean, you can get your hand down in there. I, I've got, you know. I wear size large gloves and there's plenty of room to move my hand all around in there different turn it different ways and everything you know it's a little bit it's gonna be a little bit difficult getting the tape on smooth and everything but well, you know you just got to work at it a little bit kind of just try to stick the tape on a little bit and then take your hand out so you can see what angle it is and where it's at and everything and then if it's good just smush it down if it's not good pull it off try it again you'll get it you can do it okay I got the one door down I'm starting to other door <clears throat> I got a couple little pieces on you know but I've noticed it's kind of hard to see but right there you can see it there are some other holes this is like a bent kind of a bent door so there are some other holes on this door right on that left side there that you're gonna have to cover up too and I didn't notice until I stuck my hand down there and I could feel them I think there's well One, two, three, four, five, six. It feels like there's six holes on that side. So make sure you can cover those up too. It's going to take a little bit of
little pieces of tape at a time, which is kind of the way I'm doing this one. See, I got some <coughs> holes there. I got to fill. I'm just putting little pieces at a time. And they're sticking on pretty good. But don't forget about these ones on the side. Okay, I'm going to work on it some more. Okay, we got it all. Let's see. Got it all in there. Little pieces at a time, and it took a while, you know, probably a couple hours working on just this part. I ended up closing off a little section on the side there because I realized it's just for the bottom when you're blowing it for your feet. So you might as well blow it all the way. I don't know why they made the door like that, but anyway. I closed it off. That would be better. And I did get all the pieces on the side of this one. It was kind of tricky. But eventually, I kind of have to do it by feel. Eventually I got it. Let's turn on the blower. It's blowing out like a hurricane now, it seems like. This, the same thing up here for the defrost. So I think we fixed it. Pretty awesome. It's all working good. Uh, I did turn it on a minute ago and man it blew out a bunch of stuff. A bunch of this stuff just kind of blew out. This is the old stuff that covered those holes. Why they made those holes I don't know. I cleaned up pretty much all the plastics and stuff in there so now it's just a matter of putting everything back together. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, I'll kind of show, I'm not going to show like every every little bit, but I'll show kind of how as I'm doing it, you know, so that we remember how to put everything back. Okay. Okay. So I put a little washer with some JB Weld on this, fix that. Here's the bolt that goes here. And now we gotta get these pieces into the vents and around some other stuff, so it might be a little tricky. A little tricky getting this back in here. Got a little play with these, so just lift them up like that. If I get this started first.
Check it on glove. Okay, so all this stuff is kind of loose now, so we're going to have to uh, glue this back, all this, all this stuff back together. So JV Weld, I'm going to probably just do one at a time because it's kind of stressed a little bit. Not in. Let's both in. Slug it there. Now we're just going to do some gluing. Okay, we're I'm gluing back this where I made the cuts. I had to use a clamp on this one because it was kind of bowed out a little bit, but these are fine. Those are all fine, looking pretty good. I put a little bit of the uh, insulation tape on the underside just to kind of hold it together. Now it's just a matter of waiting for this to dry. <clears throat> So we can do the next steps. And in fact, I made myself a little list. Kind of just went backwards from the way I took everything out. So the next part is the uh, dash trim, the black dash trim on the driver's side. Which would be <clears throat> all this area up here where the speedometer goes and everything. So everything's going good. Uh, you know, I don't think it'll take too long to get everything back together. So now it's just a matter of waiting for the glue to set up and dry a little bit so I feel comfortable moving stuff around, screwing stuff back together. Okay, check back with you. Okay, I let this sit overnight. You know, it's pretty hard, all this stuff. My little repairs. I could probably cure a little bit more, but it's so cold, you know, it takes a long time. But uh, it's good enough for us to put everything back together. Pretty hard. So, I think we're ready to start assembling everything. I got my list. So the da dash trim and the, the black dash trim on the driver's side is what we want to put in first. Which is all this, but I got to take the speedo back out. I had to hook it back up to uh, be able to put the convertible top down. So I'm just it's just the two clips in the back. So I'll take that out real quick and then we'll get started. These little valleys here, <clears throat> if you're wondering, there's a air, little intake, outtake right there. It blows in these little valleys and then they actually blow out in little vents here for your window. They de defrost your window. Side windows. Got this <clears throat> ready to go in. To clean this out, <clears throat> I just use a pipe cleaner. You can get it from the front and the back when it's out. And <clears throat> I use a rag and some Windex. to clean, kind of clean everything up. This is real good for getting out those little tiny pieces of foam and stuff that are maybe still stuck in there. So I found out that works pretty good. So now we're just going to put this piece all the way in. 
we got four screws on the top here. And then we got these cables for the speedometer that go through the right side little end block here. Put those in. Everything just kind of puts it, sits in place. I don't think there's any clips or anything. Okay, I remember we got four screws on the inside here. Some screws on the side. There's some screws. There's another screw down here. A couple screws on the side. And then four up here. So I'm going to put all those in. Suck it set. Little plastic bag of screws. Tightness and then start with my hand first. You don't want to tighten them too tight because you'll break the plastic. It just has to be snug. You don't want them too loose, you know, because then you'll be rattling and stuff. Just like a snug fit. Fire truck.
four up here. Just take this up, up top here. Extension up for this one. There's one way up here in the corner. <clears throat> okay, so there's one on the side here, this one right here. That's it <clears throat> for this piece. <clears throat> now we're ready to put the speedometer back there. Give it another little clean. I did end up taking the little plastic piece off here. There's just two little clips. Here, here. These clips have broke off. And then there's a little slot down here that they fit in. So just be careful. Pry this end off. Don't pry it next to the plastic. Pry this end off and it just kind of pops off. Because the, bla the plastic is very brittle and this kind of stuff. Shouldn't the dash, you know, the sun's hitting it all the time. So be careful if you. You know, there's a little dust and stuff in there. I just wanted to clean out real quick. Now we're ready to put these back in. It's going to be a little bit harder because we don't have as much room there. Let's see if we can get this green one in. Tighter. Little pink handle, you just kind of flip back and it pushes it in until till you hear it click and then it's in. On the, on the back of here, there's this little plastic pin. It's got to fit in. It's that hole right there. Tip it, tip it up a little bit and then kind of wiggle it around until it goes in. You shouldn't have to, it's not the cables in the way, it's that little plastic pin. You shouldn't have to shove it too hard. Now we got two little, these little, little screws that go in here. Still T20, but there's a little screws. Okay. Okay. And now we got that plastic piece that goes on the top here. And then this slides in. Put the gray part on the bottom. Now we're ready to put this side in. Give it a little clean inside and out. It goes like this. Okay, you got two things to plug in here. Headlight switch and then the uh, dimmer display for the display. Which 
sure it clicks in. And this one. There we go. That side's in all the way. I can see the tabs ready to go in this side. Just make sure you're not on something in this corner here. Little tab over here, I gotta get that place. There it goes. Have to do a little wiggling around to get it to fit in there, right? All right, now we gotta just put some screws in. Down here you got three screws, here, here, and over here. Okay, that's good. And we got the fuse box door or panel with the door. Has these little clips to fit in, and it's also got these little slots here. This one's almost coming off. It's kind of wiggling back and forth a little bit. See this opens up here to your fuse box. It's actually really convenient having it right there. And then we've got this little piece trim. And it's just got the two little clips good in the slots. Push that right on. And we're done with this side, this part. All that's back together, it looks pretty good. Now we got our uh, little list here. Fuse box, cover driver side. Now we gotta do the black part trim on the passenger side, which is like where the airbag is and stuff. So let's switch sides. Get at that. Okay, we got the side, airbag side. It's got four bolts on the top, four bolts on the bottom. I cleaned this all out with the pipe cleaner and a rag and just got all the dirt stuff off. So now we're ready to put it in. Just slides right in. Okay, I'll say the ones on the bottom. Good. Next on the list, glove box. OK, 
Okay, ready for the glove box. Let's go back in. There's a couple things you gotta plug the wires in. So screws down here. And a couple screws here, uh, here and here. And then on the end, it's got this piece. You're supposed to clip in and have a little screw here. I don't think it even had it on it. We'll see what happens. First, let's plug this in. A little tiny one. A little bit bigger one. Kind of slide in the side here. And it goes up and it's got these little clip here, a little clip here, and a little tab here. And then on the side, it's got this little little tab here. You don't want to break off. So, kind of start it on this side, get this little piece in here, and get this piece over in position. It'll be a little, a little easier, maybe. Okay, maybe it kind of holds in place right there. Let's put a couple of the bottom ones in. Side here. It's a little. It's got a little break in it right there. Uh, so I'm gonna leave this off for right now. I'm gonna put a little JB weld and a washer in there to hold this together. A little. It's just a little cracked off, you know. I'll put this one in down here. Open this up. Then you get two screws here, one in here, one here. I believe. Oh, those are the two. Have like the little extra area here. You know, there's only two of them, so. Thread it all the way up. Okay. Tight, but not too tight. See down here, there's a spot for another screw. I don't think it had one in it. Actually, the angle's off a little bit. So I'm not even going to worry about this right now. Because this is going to kind of be covered by, by all this stuff anyway. So I wouldn't worry about that unless yours is matching up better than mine. Then you can put it in. Alright, now we got to do 
Next on the list. Okay, ready to put the, the bar here. And it's these long bolts. And remember, it's got to go this way. Because there's two different ends. One's a square end and one's round. And the rounded one goes on this side. Finish it off. Because the other one's got to butt up against the center console over there. That's T30. It's just these little kind of rubber tipped slide in there and it's just pressing them in there. And just like that. Now that's all in there. You can tighten that one up pretty tight because it's needs to be pretty secure okay so now we just got to put uh, start putting this center piece in and uh, there, as you can see there's not too much more to go shouldn't take too long right. center console You got two plug-ins. This one goes way down deep in here. This one plugs in here. Let's put this in here first. Finagle this in here. Get the wires for your stereo system. You gotta kind of just get lined up in the right spot so you're not over too far one way or the other. And now it seems like it's sliding in pretty easy. Let's pull this radio cord through. Now, make sure the wires in the back here are kind of out of the way. Gonna fit in a little groove here from the bar. There's a little slot here. Fits into this slot. That is it. Good. Good to go. Got two screws on the top here. Couple screws here, and a couple on the bottom, the very bottom. Uh, one thing I forgot to do is these cords down here. Before you start tightening stuff up, push those back out of the way. Come through this little slot in the bottom here. Now we're good. 
Now we got it. We got it in there. Okay, now we just gotta put the screws in. Okay, so I got this in. I got the three screws put in on top here. Now I gotta put the bottom ones in. I'm gonna use an extra washer on each side. Two under. more things we're done stereo
the other side. I did take the speakers up too. Speaker, little speaker cord, hooks right there. And on the end here, there's a couple of little uh, plastic pins that go into the side of the wall. And then it's got all these clips in the front. Three screws up here. I believe these are the ones with the little round circular little spring washer. It comes in handy. Pull it a little hard. Get that to fit in there. And one more piece here that I was gluing in. Put a little glue, a little washer here. I'm just going to put another washer. these little clips clip in and push it in it's in there just like that And just like that, we're done. Okay, I just wanted to go over what kind of tools you'll need for this job. <clears throat> I guess you could use a sawzall, but <clears throat> I would think that would be a lot more difficult than using the power power tool, multi-function. You know, it's a multi-tool. It vibrates <clears throat> the little blade and uh, I got this one at Harbor Freight I don't think it was that much I can't remember exactly it seemed like it was like 25 30 bucks um, but I use it a lot for all the kinds of different stuff it's really a handy tool to have around the house if you're doing stuff around the house you need to cut through some plastic pipe or some baseboard you know st stuff like that it's it works it works pretty good uh, you'll need a ratchet set <clears throat> extension for some of that stuff and uh, you need some scissors screwdriver you got to have some some uh, insulated tape some metal tape you know you can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever some JB weld plastic bond 
it works pretty good. Uh, the more I got, the more I used it, uh, I think the better I got at knowing what kind of stuff it would do and how to mix it good. And you know, because sometimes the hardener doesn't come out the same amount as the the other stuff, and then you're and then it's taking a lot longer to harden up. So, but so far, you know, all the stuff hardened really good, and it seems to be working pretty good. And then you'll need a a star set bits. You'll need the T20 and a T30 for sure. And uh, I think that's I think that was pretty much it. You know, it wasn't nothing I had to go out and buy any tools for. I already had like all this stuff. Um, and a lot of patience and some time. I did it. So yeah, everything's working. Um, the air is working perfectly, and it's blowing out way better. And like now, I got it on the hot, and it's like hot. Turn it over to cold, and it's super cold. You've got nothing flying at you. Uh, so the defroster should be working good. It's blowing out really good up there when I turn on defrost. So I mean, I would say if you got time, like I said, I did this over a weekend, like a long weekend. I I would say take at least two days, you know, so you're not killing yourself trying to get it done. But, uh, it wasn't too bad, you know, just, um, unscrewing a bunch of stuff. Uh, I would, I would make a, like a little bag where you can keep all your screws and stuff and make like a list of the steps you're doing or watch the video again. Uh, that's about it. There's just, there's still some more projects to do on this car. I gotta fix the cup holder. Cup holder broke. I'm gonna replace these uh, speakers in the front doors, and uh, I'm sure there'll be other little things. But I mean, that was the major thing to get done, and it all worked out fine. So I would say you could do it. If I can do it, you could do it. Just have a little patience and uh, save yourself some money. Okay, thanks for watching. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, ask me any questions, uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna, you know, be working on my motorcycle more. The weather's getting better now, and I'm restoring a 1970 Yamaha Enduro 125 motorcycle. And that's been a fun project, but it's just been kind of cold to be doing it, and other stuff distracted me. But I'm, I'm gonna get back into that, so I'll be posting more of those. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.